Hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dina, and today we are going to be doing this DIY thirsty plant kit, which came in the maker box, uh, su subscription box, which I opened a little while ago. I'll go ahead and link the unboxing if you'd like to see the other uh, items in that box, but I figure we can go ahead and do this DIY thirsty plant kit because I have a kind of sad looking cilantro plant here, which I don't think I've been watering very correctly. <laughs> so let's get into this. As you may have seen in the unboxing video, that's what it's going to look like. You make a sensor using plaster and a circuit, just by wiring, twisting the wires together, and then you power the moisture sensor with solar energy, and you can invent new ways to keep your plant happy online. Which is pretty cool. So, inside here, Sensor sensation, make your plaster of Paris, moisture sensor by adding a little water. Once it's dry, you're ready to go. And then it has some more manuals and projects online. And it says you only need 10 minutes of prep. So let's go ahead and open this. So here are the contents of the box. This is the plaster. Go ahead and take the plastic off the plaster. Oops. <laughs> So here's the plaster. Despite um, working in many artistic media, I've never actually worked with plaster of Paris before. And we have some copper nails. as well as LEDs, and they're actually pretty big LEDs um, compared to the ones I'm used to working with uh, for making circuits and stuff. There's some pieces of, I guess, acrylic or plastic or something. wonder how they fit together. Here is the little <laughs> plexiglass circuit board, you can see here. It's kind of laser cut in there. We also have sensor mold and tape. Here are our MOSFETs. And the small kitty is on her combo. And we have some resistors over here. It's an interesting um, color combination for resistors. Um, it's a yellow, purple, orange, 
uh, I forget my exact uh, <laughs> numbering scheme for the colors, but you like multiply um, what each of the colors are um, by the numbers that they represent and you get the total um, ohmic resistance amount. But the gold on the end there is the tolerance level. It's either like gold or sil silver usually. And I think gold is 20% tolerance. I forget. <laughs> And here we have the solar power panel with the two leads. And uh, we can go ahead and take off the plastic there. Ah, that was nice. We have some more wire pre-cut and stripped which is a good thing because I do not think I have my wire strippers with me in this new apartment <laughs> and here's our little booklet So it says download your manual, you can get step-by-step -step manuals on their site, build your sensor, twist together components to make a circuit, cast the blaster sensor, and there you have it. And a little instructional how plants eat. Plants can't walk to the fridge and pick up a tasty snack, so they make their own right where they are. They turn water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight into oxygen and yummy nutritional goodness. So there's carbon dioxide coming into the leaf oxygen leaving it, sugar being created, and the little LED is helping it out, I guess. So here we have the sunlight going into the negative side of the um, little guy right here. Silicon, um, there's a positive and negative charge in there that when there's a difference between the two and the electrons are flowing, it'll light up the LED. It says, the DIY Thirsty Plant is powered by a solar panel. It works by turning light into electricity, roughly the same voltage as two AA batteries. Pop it in the sun and voila, natural energy aplenty. Check your components. Place each component in the correct space to make sure it's everything you will need. So, oh, it's a 47,000 ohm resistor. I was usually working with a thousand and ten thousand increments, so 47 ohm is interesting. So we have two MOSFETs, the plastic marker, waterproof casing, foam side, double-sided tape, the solar panel, sensor mold, container of plaster of Paris, sensor cable, waterproof casing. Nice! So it looks like I will have to get the actual manual online. I could probably just go ahead and wire it up how I think it should go, but let's follow the directions this time. Okay, so first we're going to make the moisture sensor using Plaster of Paris. So I have the instructions on my phone. We have everything laid out. And it says, find your tube. We're using it as a mold for the sensor. So that's right here. says secure your tube. You can use <laughs> modeling clay, sticky tape, or play-doh, or anything you think might work. Well, I do not have those things, but I can try and improvise. Pour a thumb of water in the empty container. That's an interesting measurement. So 
So then it says, sprinkle plaster of Paris, be quick, you have about five minutes to mix the plaster. It sets quite hard, it sets hard quite quickly. Um, so then you just stir and mix until it's smooth. It should be like a gloopy shampoo. Um, if it's like cream cheese, we've gone too far. <laughs> and then we pour it in there. I'm just going to cut a hole in the side of this. Um, easier said than done. There we go. Nice. Alright, and in it goes. <laughs> Maybe I should have cut the hole a little bit bigger. I'm sorry for if there's any sirens in the background. Um, this is why I can't usually film in the daytime. <laughs> hmm, I think that's a little runny still. Let's make this a little bit bigger. There we go, that's easier. Okay, and then just stir it up. Hmm, it's still kind of thin though. Let's add a little bit more. I mean, they do give you quite a bit. So we're not looking for <laughs> milk. And we're not looking for cream cheese. I think it could use just a bit more. And also now I'm thinking maybe I should have um, put something down on my table before um, starting this, but that's okay. Hopefully <laughs> we don't get anything stuck to the table with uh, plaster of Paris. Okay, there's a little bit of that gloopy bit, but I think it'll be alright. Pour in the mixture, tap it on the table to knock out any air bubbles, and then pour. Air pockets may stop the sensor from working. Um, and then you put the nails in, and they mustn't touch or sink. Okay, I can do it. Now I'm not, I don't have anything really to hold this down, so we'll see how it goes. I don't think mine is going to look as neat as theirs. <laughs> Oops, forgot to tap out some air bubbles. Hopefully this works. <laughs> oh no, it's everywhere. <laughs> They make it look so easy. <laughs> okay, well, now time to add these guys. The copper nails. Copper is a pretty good conductor, so I can see where they're going with this. Now the trick is going to be not getting them to touch. Ooh. Hopefully... I made the mixture thick enough. <laughs> um, well, I guess I'll just hold them until it dries. Alright. 
I'm just going to take these out for a second. <laughs> um, maybe I'll let it firm up a bit on its own and then try and stick the um, nails back in. <laughs> Maybe I'll just try with one. How about that? Oh, that's good. Okay, so maybe I should have just waited a second until it firmed up on its own before holding them in like complete liquid. <laughs> okay, so I will come back when this has dried and we'll go to the next step. So next we will be making the circuit while we wait for the plaster to firm up. Um, we won't be able to use the uh, sensor for 24 hours, but we can go ahead and do this part. So we've got plastic marker, LED, MOSFET, resistor, solar panel, sensor cable, rectangular acrylic casing, acrylic casings, double-sided tape. So here is the... So here is the circuit board. This is where you'll fix your circuit. Place it front side up. Since I can read sensor, I'll assume that's front side up. LED says LEDs are tiny light bulbs that use very little energy. When your LED blinks, you'll know that your plant needs watering. So it'll be blinking, I assume, from the MOSFET, which I wondered why they had it in here. MOSFETs are metal oxide semiconductor fuel effect transistors. So basically, um, you can basically create a binary answer um, depending on the one of the inputs. So basically you can have it alternate between, I think they had um, three volts, it's a three volt solar panel, so we can alternate between sending three volts through and zero volts, and you can get the LED to blink by alternating that amount. and you can also calculate how much you would need to turn these LEDs on but not break them and um, that's what the resistors are for. Okay, sorry for the uh, rant there. Um, so it says, can you see the long leg of the LED? Yes. This means it's important which way around you place the LED. It's called polarity. All components where the legs have different sizes have polarity. The current enters the long leg of the LED and it leaves through the short leg. So place it on the board, match the long leg with the plus sign. So here is the plus and here is the minus. So I'll stick that in there, whoops. <laughs> well, I guess that's okay too. I assume the MOSFET goes in here. Bend the legs out, it keeps the LED in place. Okay, I will do that. It's interesting, I've never worked with a, what looks like, Lexan, Lexane uh, plexiglass type circuit board. I've only really worked with like breadboards and um, like those green type circuit boards that I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Okay, and the next says, find the resistor. A resistor slows down the flow of electricity giving just enough to light the LED. Too much electricity could make the LED pop. Um, so I'm just gonna remove these. Okay, well, I accidentally bent it a little bit, but that's all right, because we need to bend it to go into the circuit anyway. So it says, did you notice the colors of the resistor? If you go to an electronic shop, you'll find tons of different resistors. The colors indicate how much energy they let through. Okay, they're talking about energy, but they don't really mean energy. Uh, well, they're just using, I guess, common terms, but energy is a little bit of a different thing. So bend legs. Make the resistor's legs look like the letter N. Place it on the board. Doesn't matter which way around the resistor is put in, it does not have polarity. We know this because the legs are the same length. Personally, out of habit, I always put the gold or silver little tolerance band towards ground. <laughs> Not sure why. So there we go. It's on the board as well. 
twist the legs together, pinch and twist the resistor leg with the long LED leg. I was wondering how they were going to get these together, <laughs> or get these to actually flow, the current to actually flow through, without a soldering iron. I guess it seems pretty obvious now that I'm looking at it though. So those are together, and next up. Find the solar panel and peel off the plastic. <laughs> Whoops, I already did that. This is the power source for your circuit. It turns the light into electricity. It makes as, about as much electricity as a small AA battery in bright light. In low light, the circuit will not work, so do not expect a thirsty plant sensor to blink at night. Okay, so here we have the light sensor solar panel. Uh, it says twist and pull the ends off of the solar panel. Oh, not the solar panel. <laughs> solar panel wire, not the solar panel. <laughs> uh, it's nice that they've pre-stripped the wire for us. Ugh. Except when I wire strip them myself, Ooh. the uh, stripper kind of pulls the uh, cut part off for me. <laughs> Okay, and it says, push the wires through the acrylic. The colors of your acrylic might be slightly different. Okay, so this, just one of these, I guess. Oh no, I see, there's the blue. So you want it to go through here. Push these guys through. Good. Good stuff. Push the red wire through the plus sun hole. <laughs> sun. Sun hole. Okay. Red is through. Oops, and I guess this is the um, positive side of our battery, so just twist this together right here. I'm assuming. Yep, twist together. So it says, the metal inside wires carry electricity from one place to another. There can be different types of wires, short, long, fat, thin. The plastic coating protects the wire and does not conduct electricity. These are the same as you might find connecting some older speakers. If you have one at home, check it out. Sensor cables, pull off the tips, then pinch and pull the cables apart with your fingernails. Then push the wires through the two sensor holes. Turn the board over, and twist one with the resistor leg. So here, the sensor wire, wires, sensor wires, oh. <laughs> Pull apart just a little bit and make sure they do not cross the threads there. Oops. Come on, camera, you can do it. There we go. Um, <laughs> I don't know what kind of fingernails they have, but mine is not really cutting through it. <laughs> I just did my fingernails too, so I don't really want to mess them up. Hmm. I'm just not having luck separating them, so we're not going to. <laughs> Let's go around to this side again, and then just stick them right through here. The sensor. Here we go. Awesome. And just twist the resistor and sensor together. <laughs> there we go. Not the best seal since I couldn't get um, the sensor wires to separate, but I think it'll do for now. And the next part So the next part says, push the black solar panel wire through the sun hole. Uh, turn board over and twist the black panel wire with the other sensor wire. Oop, here we go. Starting to look more complicated now. Okay. 
definitely hard to <laughs> do while also uh, filming, but I think we got it. Oops. Ooh, maybe. <laughs> uh, I'm just not very good at twisting these guys while making sure I'm not going too out of focus and uh yeah, there we go. Not bad. Just twist this one together a little bit on the side again. Okay. And the next step find the MOSFET, the Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Such a long name. <laughs> Even the acronym's pretty long. So it says, a MOSFET works like a gate. When a sensor is wet, it stops electricity from getting to the LED so it doesn't blink. When the sensor is dry, it lets electricity through to the LED, making it light up. Place the MOSFET with the metal side pointing up. Turn the board over and bend the legs like this. Take one of these guys. They're a little bit bigger than the MOSFETs that I used in school, but that's okay. I'm sure I've seen some about this size as well. So you can get a better look at the MOSFET. Whoops. And here we go. Just like that. Now let's bend the legs. I think they had... what was the combination here? The middle one goes up and the other two go down. Which makes sense, <laughs> looking at the diagram. Okay. Wrap the twisted resistor sensor wire around the right MOSFET leg. Um, <laughs> easier said than done. <laughs> uh, whoopsies. Let's see how we can get this in there. <laughs> uh, be nice if I just had a little bit of extra wire to connect these guys. Maybe that'll do. <laughs> okay, so that's what we've got going on at this point. So now, wrap the bottom LED leg around the middle MOSFET. Okay. You know, I should have um, found some pliers that would have helped before um, attempting this. Wasn't uh, really thinking too much about uh, preparation, but. Oops, next time I'll know. All right. <laughs> Come on. I can do it. Ugh. I was always a very sloppy um, circuit putter together. <laughs> uh, I would get trouble because my wires were um, always too long because I just reused the same wires from um, project to project. I didn't usually um, cut new wire for like each different circuit that we are making. <laughs> so it says to test the sensor. You can see that it's blinking right now. It's very um, small blink because I'm not in direct sunlight. But um, yeah, so we know things are <laughs> happening. <laughs> so it says remove the mold. Pull apart the slit down the side if you haven't yet followed the steps to create the sensor. We have done that, but um, it's not dry yet. And I will be back <laughs> to film the rest once the um, sensor has done drying. Okay, so now this guy is all dry, so we just have to remove the mold. 
Okay, actually that looks pretty easy. Cool. So this is the moisture sensor. Now it says to snap the sensor. It will naturally break right below the nails like a stick of asparagus. All right, let's see if I can do that. <laughs> oh, yay, all right. <laughs> it's got a weird kind of lip now, but that's all right, I think. All right, what's next? Tightly wrap the sensor wires. Your LED may stop blinking now that the plaster, sen plaster sensor is damp. That shows it's working. Okay, let's wrap the sensor. Alright. And this side as well. Okay. Now, find the side acrylics. Got them. Hook the side acrylics onto the board. All right. I assume it's like this. Good. Good, all right. Gently squeeze the hooks to slot the top acrylic into place. How did I have that? Uh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> I will do my best. Whoops, coming undone just a little bit. Whoops, well, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> um, oh, oh. <laughs> the instructions are pretty simple, but actually putting the pieces together. <laughs> Okay, I think that one's in. Might have been a little easier to do if I wasn't filming, but you know. Oh, I think it's nearly. Oh, what's stopping that one? Oh, I think it's fine now. <laughs> cool, so we've got everything in place, it looks like. Whew. Now what? Use tape to stick the solar panel into place. Moves in with the resistor. Oops. Hmm. I'm thinking that was meant to go this way. I'm not sure. Well, it looks like it fits that better that way, actually, so. Let's go for that. All right. Solar panel attached. You can see the LED lighting up a little bit. I don't have too much direct sunlight at the moment, but there you go. You can see it kind of start to light up. Cool. And now, it says push the sensor well into the oil. Find a plant that needs a little love. Is the LED blinking? Time to get watering can out and stop that plant from being thirsty. Well, so my other plant didn't quite make it, but I do have this black pearl pepper plant, which is a little bit dry. I will not overwater this one. <laughs> in fact, let's go ahead and put this right in the soil. And face this towards the sun. Whoops, <laughs> coming out just a little bit. Come on, you. I think the soil is so dry it's hard to push the um, <laughs> sensor down in. So here we have 
the sensor is in like that. Now we'll face this towards the sun and the light blinks. All right, well, it looks like this plant is thirsty. I'll go ahead and water him. And in the meantime, I think I can just stick this right in the planter. This plant is about to be um, repotted into something a little bit better, but in the meantime, here is the finished product. Woo! You can see the light blinking slightly. I'm sure it will be more noticeable once um, <laughs> this has some better sunlight and more voltage to run across it, but yeah. So, hope you enjoyed this little mini try out science -y tutorial. So I again got this project in my maker box that I got last month and I hope that if you are interested in little projects like these you will check out MakerBox. They definitely are a great subscription service for anybody who loves little DIY things like this. I'm going to go ahead and link that as well as the Thirsty Plant Project in the description box and just make some traditional ASMR noises until the end of the video. Hope you like this video and uh, thanks for watching. Bye!